Well, that was a crazy week. Lots of fireworks that are having a huge impact on interest rates, the markets. I mean, it's just getting even, even more crazier. So we're going to talk about that real quick. What to expect. We're going to talk about the single family and the condo market in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to talk about the Silicon Valley bank collapse and everything that's going on with interest rates because boy, does that matter. And for the luxury home of the week, not a huge surprise here if you saw the top 10 most expensive house sales in 2022, but we're headed to Barnstorm because well it seems like that's where a lot of the really expensive and really nice houses sell in Massachusetts so this week luxury house of the week headed to an immaculate oceanfront estate. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm one of the state's top agents. If you have any questions about real estate, then please reach out because I'm here to help. Now let's jump into and start with the single family market. The amount of inventory for single family homes ticked up to 2,914 units that are currently on the market. Now this is up 57 units from last week and now one unit more than where we were just 28 days ago. So in basically one month we've only seen a one unit increase in single family inventory buyers in this market they need more inventory of homes it is not a balanced market this is a heavily favored seller's market even with everything that's happened with the increased interest rates and the decrease in demand we now have 957 more houses to look at today and this is compared to last week when we had 725 more houses to look at so a huge increase in that delta between the two years and a huge huge improvement for home buyers now we had 813 houses come on the market this week now this is up from last week when we had 793 units come on the market and i was really surprised by this number is it really didn't feel like that many houses went on the market last week because we weren't sending houses to our buyers you know our a buyers where we're constantly texting them like hey check out this new house I didn't do that a whole lot last year so I was really 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 surprised to find out uh, 813 houses came on the market last week now the 813 units was 17 percent behind the same week last year when we had 979 single-family homes come on the market so yes that was a lot of houses that came on the market but we're obviously still behind where we were last year but even though we're behind this was pretty far above our four week rolling average of new listings where that four week average is 623 units so some pretty great strides pretty great jumps in the amount of inventory that's come on the market we had 823 homes go under agreement last week now the four week rolling average has been 681 units so this was a pretty big jump over that four week rolling average but when we compare it to last year when we had 1100 100 units go under agreement we were still 25.2 percent behind this year's numbers so essentially inventory was down about 17 percent but sales were down about 25 percent and and there's our delta right there and then that's what we need to continue to keep our eye on because if memory serves me correctly now that that's two weeks that those two haven't been within balance there are 408 single family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of six hundred and seventy seven thousand dollars and then that median sales price of five hundred and seventeen thousand dollars and then months of inventory this is how we gauge how strong of a market we're in the more months of inventory we have the more of a buyer's market and the closer to zero than the stronger seller's market this week months of inventory ticked up to 1.33 months versus last week when months of inventory was 1.31 months so it's still a very strong seller's market now on to the condo market we had 1882 condos on the market as of monday now inventory moved up by 85 units since last week and is now eight percent higher than it was was just 28 days ago so in the single family market we had one unit worth of growth in the condo market we've had eight percent increase in growth now what's interesting is the amount of additional inventory compared to last year actually increased as well to 367 units when you compare it to the same time same week last year there were 479 new condos that came on the market last week now the four week rolling average has been 362 units so 479 is a fantastic jump for home buyers out there just more more inventory hence why we saw the increase in the year-over-year -year inventory chart comparison but even with that big jump the amount of properties when you compare it to the same time last year was still 19 percent behind that number last year we had 415 condos go under agreement last week now the four-week rolling average has been 351 units so we jumped up there quite a bit however we're still 25 percent off the amount of units when 544 condos went under agreement 
at this same week last year. So, it, you know, just like in the single family market, sales are down by about a quarter. There were 211 condos that sold last week for an average sales price of $632,000 and then that median sales price of $480,000. And then that months of inventory ticked up to 2.01 months and this is compared to last week's 1.98 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then I really appreciate you slamming that like button as it makes a huge difference to those YouTube gods and subscribing that doesn't hurt either so let's talk about the big huge news of the week silicon valley bank if you don't know what silicon valley bank is then your head probably is under a rock quite frankly i mean this has shaked our economy as well as our markets i actually did a video as to why it happened how it happened and most importantly why it doesn't matter i'm going to link it to the end of this video it might up be up there right now as well um definitely worth the watch if you're you know, wanting kind of the, the, the really good Cliff Notes version, in my opinion. Uh, but most importantly, again, why it doesn't matter to us and most likely how it might actually help the real estate market, which bank collapse and it helps the real estate market crazy. I know that's why you got to watch the video. And look, this Silicon Valley bank collapse, it changed everything. I mean, it was just last week when I was talking about the 8% interest rates on homes and not if it was going to happen, but when it was going to happen. And this bank collapse, it has just changed everything in that sense. And that's why it's so such big, huge news that you need to know more about. And what's crazy, like I said just a couple of moments ago, it actually might end up being a huge positive for the real estate market. And I should really say for the seller, out there because it might just create more demand that we have in our market thereby creating even stronger sellers market I mean look I, I, I knew it was going to be a good strong market I could never have predicted a collapse like we're going to see right I just I had no idea uh, I mean this is just it's 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 crazy it's a crazy time that we live in now the big thing is is that the Silicon Valley bank collapse has just completely upended our interest rate markets in our markets, our financial markets, they are now pricing in a Federal Reserve rate cut by September. I mean, put that in perspective. It was just last week when there was only a 9% chance that interest rates were going to go down in 2023. In a one-week change of events that happened in one week, the markets are now completely pricing in where the Fed needs to cut rates by September. And speaking of the markets, now this was data before the CPI print numbers that came out yesterday or on Tuesday, but at that time, the markets were pricing in a 17 basis point hike that was going to happen next week when the Federal Reserve meets and they go over whether they're going to increase rates. Now, how could it be 17 basis points when they generally go up by increments of 25 basis points? And that's a fantastic question. What that means is, yes, there are a lot of people betting that it's going to be 25 basis points points but now there are a bunch of people betting that it, there actually will be no cut and the fed is just going to keep rates where they are today and i gotta tell you i'm falling more and more into the camp of interest rates aren't going to go up now with the expectation that the fed is going to decrease rates in 2023 well the mortgage rates have now followed and that's why we've seen some huge huge swings in the mortgage rate market i mean they've gone up well, they were going up and then they cratered down by a half percent in just two days. And then yesterday, just kind of crazy, they were up by a quarter of a percent. So what does all this mean? Essentially, it just is showing and it's meaning that there's a lot of uncertainty in our marketplace. Quite frankly, you're going to continue to see big swings like this, whether you're looking at the stock market, which is down like 700 points right now. You're going to see it in the interest rate market. I mean, it's just going to be everywhere you look. Now, like I said earlier, this is fantastic news. If you're a current home buyer and you just saw interest rates go down by a half percent, then that means overnight it unlocked 5% of buying power for you. So that could be a pretty large difference. I mean, to say it this way, if you're looking at a $500,000 house, that's like somebody giving you an extra 25 grand worth of buying power. Not a bad two days to be in the marketplace. And what could, this could do is end up stimulating the market where you have more buyer demand, thereby making it a even stronger seller's market where we could have price appreciation which is not a lot of what 
people have been really talking about when you talk about real estate. I mean, these are just some crazy and huge dynamics that we're going on right now because you're also going to see our federal government start stimulating the economy. You're already seeing them announcing programs about quantitative easing, basically, where they are going to a bank that might be in trouble, right? Rather than collapsing, they can now go to the Fed and say, hey, look, I have this collateral. It's worth $10 million um, on face value. But the market today is only going to pay me $7 million for that. And the Fed's going to say, okay, here you go. Here's $10 million bucks for you. And what this is going to do, it's going to continue to stimulate the marketplace, allow more liquidity in the marketplace, which is going to make it that way buying properties when you're leveraging properties through interest rates even cheaper and i personally continue to have a very unpopular opinion i did a video on this of why lower interest rates are actually a bad thing i actually think the higher interest rate environment is a good thing for the long term in our economy because it was just last week that one of my buyers were up against a 12 offer situation and that's what interest rates were close to seven percent compared to the close to six and a half percent that they are today the big thing is is we continue to need inventory i mean the market it's just not anywhere close to being balanced today and now let's jump to the luxury home of the week welcome home to 132 south bay road in barnstable this is an eight bedroom and 10 full and two half bath home that spans nearly 11,000 square feet and is nestled on two acres of waterfront property that offers sweeping ocean views built in 2019 this home offers a sophisticated interior as well as a stunning outdoor space with swimming pool and private duck you'll be amazed by the unsurpassed quality and attention to detail found throughout this magnificent home now downstairs you're going to find a grand entrance with soaring ceilings and lots of windows to take advantage of the exceptional views the marble clad kitchen is ideal for entertaining as well as a cooker's paradise the primary suite now this is where it's at it features an office which well that kind of stinks a sitting area a private deck two dressing rooms and a spot like bathroom now additional highlights include a home gym wine cellar and two separate apartments for staff or guests this home is being marketed currently for twenty one million five hundred thousand dollars Want to talk about all of your personal real estate needs? And you can find all of my contact information in the description below. I would love to chat with you. I love talking about real estate. So whether you're looking to move in the next nine or 90 days, it doesn't matter. Let's chat. Let's talk about your real estate goals and get that ball rolling. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com. Just fill out your information and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about any of this market data, then drop them in the comments section below. You take the time to watch this video. So I I'm going to take the time to respond to you. Uh, as I always say, an informed person, they're a powerful person. So until next time.